So I'm a recovering sugar addict myself, personally. But I've talked with a lot of moms that say, well, my kids won't drink anything other than soda or fruit juices. They won't drink the water. Or, well, that's just what they like, and they eat a lot of dessert. So they're having that pressure of that, you know, mom, bring us this, we want to eat that, and that's why it's really harder for them to make that better choice or better decision to bring in more fruits and vegetables in the house. What would you speak, how would you um, respond to those, those parents? Um, so I, I truly believe that parents are gatekeepers at home, mm -hmm. and what you have in your house is what children are going to see as um, their options for what they consume. So. The less of those foods you have, the less your children are going to ask. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also important to realize that parenting and feeling empowered as a parent is something very important. And we need to actually feel comfortable with saying no and sticking to no. And it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. <laughs> it's okay to say no. Um, I think lots of times we give in due to the pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all want to be, you know, um, good parents, and we want to. We don't want our kids to get mad at us. How many of us have been told, "Oh, mommy, I hate you. You don't. Oh, yeah. I don't like what you're doing. Yeah. You're not my well, friend today." <laughs> it's it's a part of being a parent. What's right. the definition of being a parent? You right. you really have to sort of help your children make the right choices. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do think that that's part of our role. Mm -hmm. But I do think lots of times um, we aren't trained very well as being a good parent. And we all need to go to school on that too, right? Yes. You know, <laughs> and if we really think about, you know, what we loved about our own parents. Oh, that's true. Sometimes, yeah. in fact, it's those hard choices and yeah. those hard examples that they set for us are the ones that we learned the most and remembered. Yeah, exactly. Well, I want to get also into um, the um, White House initiatives from um, First Lady Michelle Obama with Let's Move. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a website that's available for parents and for administrators, but how would you speak to the whole Let's Move movement as far as um, uh, regrouping on our childhood obesity issues and, and bringing that into the school lunches? Because I want to talk about their menu and, and, and your feedback on mm -hmm. that. Um, I really applaud Michelle Obama for actually taking this on. What a wonderful role for a first lady to actually take on for the United States, to actually show the importance of, you know, being physically active for children and serving as a role model. Um, you know, it is really just a wonderful um, advocate for public health, and we're just delighted that she has taken that on, to be honest with you. Um, and I think it, when we have somebody at that level taking on this message, it really allows allows us then to penetrate all parts of society. And it gives schools the, um, the ammunition to go back to principals, to individuals that are actually responsible for making the policy in schools to say, look, this is an important thing. Look at the people who are actually sending these messages. We should be doing this as part of our school. Um, and I think it's important to, to take it on at school, but um, children aren't just at school all day long. Right, that's true. <laughs> so that we also need to take the message back home to the parents, you know, because you can have a healthy environment at school, and it's important for them to actually have healthy foods mm -hmm. um, at, as part of school lunch. We're paying more attention to that with the wellness programs now um, that school lunches have to actually um, address mm -hmm. um, in order to get the reimbursements um, back from the federal government. Um, and so I think that's wonderful. But not all kids. Um, buy school lunches. That's true. Lots of children yeah. bring their lunches from home. Yeah. And so I think parents actually need to be able to pack um, you know, school lunches that are also healthy. Because we know it. I've got kids that have grown up now. And I remember them telling me, oh, mom, my lunch is the healthiest. And, you know, I traded that <laughs> carrot you gave me today for my next door neighbor's right. cookie. Well, that's sort of a natural part right. of being a child. It's okay to have it happen every once in a while. Yeah. But, you know, I think we all need to get on board. Gotcha. Gotcha. So as far as the school lunches are concerned, what would be some things that you would recommend for them to change? Well, you so know, it sounds um, to be like a lot of starches, a lot of carbs, a lot of Yeah, dairy. I think well, um, some of the changes that a lot of the um, school lunch nutritionists are trying to implement are 
less fried foods, um, foods that are higher in fiber, and more fresh fruits and vegetables. And um, it's there's no question that those foods tend to cost a little bit more. That's true. Um, and so trying to find some creative ways that the school is actually able to subsidize the school lunch program, I think is going to be very critical in order for us to be able to change our school lunches in a healthy way. Gotcha. I, l I love this poster that you have up because it talks about all the different areas of um, what true nutrition is all about. Because I know you mentioned about um, making sure that our food is nutrition, nutrient-based, heavy-based in nutrients and, and calories, especially for the infants and the toddlers and um, for the babies in that matter. So, um, which goes back to portion control too. Absolutely. So if our kids Absolutely. are eating larger amounts of foods, yes, they're looking like the adults as well too. So that's also important, I'm sure. Um, and you know, there's two things I tell parents about, um, you know, portion sizes with, um, with kids and actually getting kids to eat um, the right types of food. There's been some wonderful studies done at the University of Pennsylvania that basically show that, you know, um, if you feed kids um, at an early age, age of two, and you give them different portion sizes, kids will actually tend to eat just until they feel satiated. Mm -hmm. So they'll stop, okay? It doesn't matter about the portion size that you feed them. By the age of five, they've already been trained that if you actually give them a larger portion size, they'll eat more. Wow. So indeed, we're training our kids to eat more if we actually offer them larger portion sizes. So I say always start out with small portion sizes. And then the other thing is that I think parents think that um, kids will make um, selections about the, what they like to eat very quickly. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it really takes about anywhere from about 17 to 21 exposures to a food before a child can develop a taste preference oh, for that food. So just because you offer your child green beans one day and they hate it, doesn't mean that you know the next day they will hate it. You need to offer that food repeatedly gotcha. in order for them to begin to like that particular food.